Welcome to another hastily recorded, I can't believe it's Thursday for a visual novel recording because I'm like, oh crap, tomorrow's when it needs to be done. So it's a weekly routine. Today we're playing Mare Sol Solatium, or Mare Solatium? Fuck, <laughs> bad start. <laughs> I immediately don't know how to pronounce the game. It's fine, it's fine. I don't need to know what I'm doing ever. This is created by... They who you might know as the person who drew Beck 500 times in the last month. So if you've been watching Noel playing games and saw a lot of Beck art in a similar art style, it's this person. Chapter 1. But since it falls onto my lot. The room was hot. Humid. Sweat slicked his fur to agree that would, under normal circumstances, make him uncomfortable. Narrow hips thrust forward between his legs. Alrighty, I skipped ahead a bit because the first scene was full-on boinkin' with on-screen nudity, so good time to remind you, games are 18+, plus, <laughs> and this is for adults. Forgot to say that sooner. The sound of stone rapping against the stone... Oh, the sound of stone rapping against stone met his ears. Someone was at the door, so we were just woken up from a sex dream, I believe. Dalen? Dalen, I know you're in there. Bones and joints cracked. How long had it been since he last moved? How long had it been since Jacob's voyage? Dalen, it's been 706 days. Lunar days since you left your apartment. We have new staff and we're talking about you like you're a fucking ghost story. He did some basic math in the back of his head while rolling his wrists and popping his knuckles. That was what, 50? 55 some odd Earth years? He felt his head clunk against one of his numerous bookshelves. One of his antler caps must have fallen off while he was asleep. Sure enough, he saw his reflection in the window and saw one antler was huge and twisting a solid foot or so beyond the top of his head. Judging by its growth, the gold cap must have fallen off in the last year or two. I heard your joints cracking through the walls. I know you're awake. For someone without conventional ears, the overseer had unreasonably good hearing. Dalen! With a groan, the deer rose from his bed. He craned his head back as he pushed his, hi his hips forward. He could feel that familiar old pressure in his spine, resisting the, the movement for a moment. <clears throat> That's a sound. Before the sound of a dull crack filled the room. Sweet matron. What was that? Was that your spine? Are you okay? Shut up. <laughs> Absides, I guess? I'm awake. We'll be downstairs in a few minutes. Also, if there's a full screen, bottom of the screen sensor bar in this video, it's because people be walking around with their junk out. <laughs> An agitated grumble came from the other side of the door of the front door. You better be. Your sister has been looking for you. That wasn't surprising. Magda became consistently more agitated every time he hibernated. It was only because she was concerned, yes, but her concern seemed incapable of finding acceptable targets. I'm sure she is. He turned and pulled the windows and cushions off his bed, discarding them on the floor until he located his lost antler cap, wedged between the thin mattress and the wall. There we are. So he hibernates, and then... I guess for 50 years hibernated or something? And everyone else just continues on like normal, so he just disappeared from life for 50 years and just does that. And I guess the caps must stop the horns from growing in his sleep, and now he's got a problem because he's got one giant horn. Cap in hand, the servant meandered over to his, his conservative bathroom and retrieved a large metal file he kept in the medicine cabinet. Not used to referring to 
third, not, not used to third person stories, I guess, in, in, in VNs where it's a character being described from the outside. Olivine eyes gazed back at him in the mirror. His fur, thankfully, never grew beyond a certain length, but the singular antler had gone unchecked. That had gone unchecked reached up beyond the purview of the mirror. I should really just get these permanently affixed. I keep telling myself I'm gonna do it, and then I don't. Oh boy. Okay. He's got an antler file. That's upsetting to think about, but I guess it must not hurt that bad. Firmly grasping the overgrown antler in one hand, he took the file in the other and ground it against the bone like protrusion. It took him a few minutes, but eventually the excess was easily snapped off, which hurt, but it wasn't anything he hadn't done before. Same as Jacob. Setting the discarded antler down, Dalen used the file to shape the now shortened remains to match its counterpart. He sometimes wishes antlers would just grow and shed like feral deer of the mortal realm, but that arrangement also produced a lot more mess with a lot more regularity. That's when you get the, uh, what you call them, the, the velvet. Where every time they grow back, they have the weird flesh on them that then sheds, and then you've got bloody antlers and so on. At least they don't bleed all over the place. That's... something. So, of the mortal realm, which makes sense that they might be immortal because, uh, 50 year naps? He stepped over the tub and quickly showered himself off. His soaps must have been replaced by the sentries over the years, as they were all still fresh and untouched, though the bottles have certainly changed in design. Fifty some odd years of sleep could actually work up a small bit of grime in the fur, and he wouldn't tolerate that for any longer than he had to. Once he was finished, he had replaced the golden calf that would prevent the antler's growth, and made his way back to the main room. Earth light illuminated his home through the singular, circular window next to his bed. Beyond the glass, Dalen eyed Liminal City. It was more or less the same as it had been when he went to sleep all those years ago. There were a couple of changes here and there. The roof of the building closest to his now had a dome shape to it. The great library that sat upon the cliff above the city seemed to have acquired a new wing. And there was a new clock tower which stood over by the harbor. Well, it's nice to know this place functions just fine without me. A sigh escaped his muzzle. I should probably get downstairs. If Magda's here, she's probably giving Apsides a headache. He pulled his sash from the hook next to the door and fastened it with a golden crescent around his shoulders. What are you dressed as? What are you doing here? That's wild. Because just a second ago there was the sash, the, the cape sticking out, but then now there's a whole field of something over it. And it's up and down his body and everything. Then with a the snap of his fingers, his shadow darkened to a deep green color before crawling up his body, obscuring his lower half from view. Standing there for a moment, an image flashed through his mind, a memory of a scrap of paper fading, fading from existence. Rubbing his temples, he sighed, shook his head, and then willed the stone slab that functioned as his door to move aside. Specks of green gems in the stone glimmered to life before the slab slid into the wall next to it. Time to get the day started. Purple... Downstairs, Dalen found himself in the waxing lighthouse bar and brothel. Some things certainly had changed more than others, it seems. He was confronted with the smells of cigar smoke and various bar foods. The old tavern aesthetic the establishment had, had adopted when he was last awake had been replaced with that of a 70s American bar. Broad, simple shapes, and long stretches of complementary colors defined the place. 
The rickety wooden bar stools now opened upon singular legs with metallic rings near the base that served as footholds. Absidy stood behind the bar, rubbing a glass cup with a rug, with a rag. The cup had likely long since been fully cleaned, but the bonehead was locked in a staring contest with a large bear. It seemed his sister had indeed come calling for him. She was either free of students or had them all engrossed in tasks back in the scholar's sanctum. Let's see how what good Absidy's censorship is. It's not. <laughs> that bar is staying up. <laughs> that is. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Keeping them whatever censorship on the screen that I put on there, because <laughs> that is fully defined. <clears throat> Magda didn't normally visit the wax. Her nature left her with a predisposition that made her uncomfortable with the brothel side of the business, but so long as no one was boning out in the open, she could handle it well enough. She also just liked to distract her, uh, herself with either engaging in scholarly discussion with absides or just outright annoying him. Today seemed to be the latter. Absides? Where isn't yours? Are you fully censored? I can't tell. There's line. There's weird lines. I think it's because the outlines might be the same color as the background for them on the left, so it's not as obvious that <laughs> there's still junk there. The large man jumped at the sound of Dalen's voice, but didn't allow his gaze to shift from the bears. You're gonna break the glass if you grip it any harder. Absidy's glanced down and then immediately cursed. Magda snickered. Good morning, brother. How was your 57-year-long nap? Dalen gave a thoughtful look for a moment. Oh, neat. I was only a couple years off. I'm... fine. Mags, uh, sorry I took so long coming downstairs. One of my caps had fallen off while I was asleep. The, queer, the bear quirked her quirked a brow at the servant. Oh, and how long did it get this time? He shrugged. Maybe a foot or two. I didn't really measure. Oh, and it had it was the right one this time. Absidy snapped his finger and cursed under his breath again. Magda gave the the bonehead a sneer. What did you bet? Both caps, and another forest situation. Dalen shook his head at that, remembering the time that he'd awoken because he could no longer move his own he head while he slept. His antlers had, had filled his living room and had been threatening to grow through his front door. Wh That's just upsetting as a concept, just fused into the room by antlers. Maybe you need a better system for these caps. It had taken him a solid hour to snap both antlers off, and then a day to break it all down and repair the damage. And yet, he still didn't want to get the caps permanently affixed, even after that debacle. Matron, spare me a fate such as that again. Magda and Absides both chuckled at that. Nonsense aside, how are you feeling, brother? The bear placed a hand on his arm and silently urged him to sit next to her at the bar. He did so without a fuss, and Absides placed a cup of strawberry milk before him. He took it and savored the sweet, creamy flavor before slumping over the bar. I'm... okay. Okay enough to work, I think. His sister and Absides gave each other a look. How about instead of diving straight into it, uh, taking another client, you just... Peruse your options. We have a few coming ashore in a short while. Get a feel for them, and consider if you're ready to take one. Like in some kind of dating simulator. I'd rather you didn't take a client at all, doll. At least not so soon. You've barely just awoken. You haven't even been outside in 57 years. Even Silas was starting to get worried about you. 
That was surprising. The Chimera was typically the easiest going about his rest periods. He hadn't even realized Dalin had partaken of them on several occasions. I think that means I think that might just mean you're not friends. <laughs> Listen, I know I've been out for a long while, but my work is important. It's why our lady allows us to rest as long as we like, whenever we like. The others don't vanish for decades at a time. Magda. Absidy's is his growl. Is there posture is there normally a posture there? Absidy's growled low in his throat. Dalen jumped a little at the sound of it. Getting your hackles down, it's a fair point. Her growl was much lower. And whether Dalen liked it or not, Magda's statement was true. The others in his line of work rarely needed as much time to recover between clients. They had also been made differently. They never got attached like he did. Sister, I understand your worry, and I know the matron allows me as much rest as I want, but I cannot rest on my laurels forever. Fifty-seven years is far too long for a rebound nap. The bear's shoulders sagged a little at what's at that while an agitated groan escaped her maw. Just... Just promise me that with whatever clients you see today, you will truly take your time considering whether or not you work with any of them at all. As overbearing as she could be, Dalen reminded her, himself her complaints were of love and concern. Dalen gazed at the cinnamon bear for a short while before reaching up and adjusting his errant strand of hair, tucking it behind her rectangular. Doop doop. Oh, Anne Aaron Street. Oh, it's Dalen's adjusting her hair, tucking it behind, behind her rectangular ear. Dalen gazed at the cinnamon bear for a short while before reaching up and. Oop, he sighed. You tricked me. You tricked me with the little bonus words. He got me. I promise to take my time and consider my options carefully. She smiled and pulled him under one arm for a hug causing his bar stool to lean precariously but for but a moment before releasing him. Good enough? If you end up with any scholarly souls, bring them to my classroom later. I always have room for a student that will allow me to see my brother more often. Oh, and do not take that, that as any sort of tacit approval from me to take a client. The expression she gave was drier than the earthly deserts of the living realm. Absidy's coughed. That's a good idea. If we can't get you to not take a client, then we can at least lighten the load. If you end up with anyone who is athletically inclined, I'll let Silas know to expect them. Dalen felt as though he could roll his eyes all the way into the back of his skull. He'd barely even been awake for more than an hour or two, and they were already treating him like his, he had his heart carved from calcite. Or talc. Fine. Just promise me you'll leave me to what I must do outside of your meddling. Almost like a contradiction. <laughs> promise me you'll leave me alone outside of the parts where you meddle. Well, that's, that covers all, all the outcomes. <laughs> the both of them had a nerve to look smug. The both of them had the nerve to look smug that he'd so easily caved to their suggestions. Works for me. You can come with me to meet them at the docks. The wind should be delivering them soon. The overseer finally remembered to place the cup he'd been cleaning down before opening a drawer on the other side of the bar and fishing out a dark green sash he usually wore while in business. <laughs> of course, yeah, it's a it's a shoulder sash, right? Not it's not gonna do anything about what's out <laughs> and about invisible the whole time. What a, what a fascinating interpretation of clothing. If, if you'll be minding him a bit longer, then I'll see myself off. Some of my students are impetuous cubs who can't be left on their own uh, to their own devices for too long. She pulled Dallin in with one last hug, squeezing his shoulders before making her way out of the bar. 
Lion or no. I'll see you later, Magda. Zip. She waved a hand back to him before stepping out the door. Come along, then. Setarov will be expecting me, and I'm sure he'll, he'll love to see that you're awake again. Dalen groaned. You didn't say... He cut himself off, remembering Absidy's choice of words. The wind should be delivering them soon. Maybe he'd been asleep for too long. He'd normally have caught something like that. He guides all souls who are in need of mer mare solatium. Dalin, you know that. Alright, let's do what I should have done before I started. Translate Mare uh, Solatium Sea Comfort Solatium is comfort and mare, Mare is 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 a uh, is the ocean, I think. C E A C, not not C with eyes. I'm trying to think, do I know Mare? I know in German the word for the sea is Mir, M E E R. There's probably some sort of evolution there. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a linguist. Talk to Toaster if you want someone that speaks five languages. I don't even really speak one. So, so far it seems like our character do be a prostitute, but some kind of specific, uh, helpful, different... I, don't know, I did not I didn't mean to say helpful to imply otherwise, that, that not normally. I just mean like, uh, some kind of specific spiritual function, or maybe even afterlife, depending on how this goes, I don't know. This might be the afterlife. It's some that I'm primed for some kind of thing to be here because we're talking about, uh, some kind of immortal creatures that can just sleep for 50 years. And it sounds like, because his flashback was about someone that he seemed pretty attached to, but a long time ago, they were going at it, and they were also smoking a cigar, I think, and they were specifically like doing the thing where you continually try not to end it. So you just keep riding a line for a long time and just living in that state for, for ages, which might be a very long time if you're immortal, uh, but it, I'm, and then they said that he gets attached, <clears throat> unlike the other ones, because he's built different. So it sounds like, somewhat upsettingly, uh, he might, uh, be some kind of, like, very long-term emotional bonds kind of person whose job is to shepherd these people in some way or help them get through something in themselves. You know, in the form of a long-term relationship that he then has to emotionally recover from, and that's why he has these, like, what seem like depressive sleep episodes, essentially. I wonder if it's anywhere along the lines of some of the stuff in a d Before You Depart, or if anyone even is dead or not, I wonder. Yeah. He doesn't usually bring them personally. Most of the time it's just a gentle breeze moving them along, or a Sudden hurricane drops them off. Actual wind, apparently. Well, I hear one of the arrivals has been a little bit of a problem. Rest assured, you won't have picked that one. You won't have to pick that one. I might even forbid it. Zeroing in straight on that character. Dalen grumbled as Apsides came around the bar. His favorite map rolled up and tucked under one arm. There are... Three people in all of Mara Salatium who can forbid or command me to do anything, and you aren't one of them. Apps. <clears throat> I just had the realization of what I should do here. No, not that one. Mare Solatium. I was right. Mare Solatium. I landed on the right thing ish. Except for the hard second one has a accent that's hard to reproduce, but... The overseer adjusted his glasses and grunted. I was hoping you wouldn't call my bluff. I haven't been asleep long enough to become a gullible fool. If only, getting you to do things for your own good would be so much easier. He gestured to the door. I assume you remember the way to the harbor from here. 
if anyone had asked Dalen if he disliked the wind deity, he'd have told them straight out, no. No, he adores the Lord of the Winds as he does the matron herself. But the truth of the matter was more complex than that. He had a disagreement with the shape-shifting god once. Once. And Seterov was not the kind of deity who was above hitting you where it hurts. Or literally blow the belt in some instances. He was precise and practical, more so than some gods at least. And if Dalen himself had, perhaps, once been the recipient of that? Practical precision? Well, it hadn't been unreasonable. But not unreasonable wasn't the same thing as likable. Whoop. So, what shape has he taken this time? I think before I went to sleep, he was... a bird of some kind? One of those that's like half blue on one side, half black on the other. He's been a coyote off and on for the past decade, alternating between that and a few other species. Why? A coyote, you say? Huh? Okay. No reason. I just want to know what I'm looking for. He said this while narrowing, avoiding the broad swing of a man turn, turning around with a stack of planks in his arms. The harbor had certainly seen better days, and because they could never fully shut it down for repairs and maintenance, it was constantly in state of renovation. Some days it was a warehouse, storing goods brought from the living realm. Okay, well that narrows that part down. So they said mortal before, but that could have meant not immortal. But they mean alive, and implying we're not here or something, or people... Yeah, I think this is an afterlife story. Probably could be clarified by me reading the description of the game before I download it, and just so we're clear, I basically never do that. I pretty much just, based on vibes and screenshots half the time, just go, yeah, sure, and I click on that one, and then I just start playing. Uh, others, a singular dock or place of business. Something was always being fixed. The pair came around the corner of the warehouse, just as a gentle breeze met their backs. Yeah, I figured we're on the, we're on the moon, and not just a moon, and that Earth light meant literally light reflecting off of Earth, which is interesting. It's interesting the idea that it's even a concern, but I guess it's so it's close enough and big enough that it would cause there to be Earth light. Because obviously there's still sunlight. Well... No. Because the moon is tidally locked, right? Doesn't that mean that one side is always... Isn't one side always facing the Earth, the other side's not? Isn't that what's going on there? So I guess, actually... If you're on the dark side of the moon, then you only get Earth light. And not so much sunlight. Granted, it's from the sun first, but you know what I mean. I like... The, it's, 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 it's sketchy, but I do like the detail that you can, uh... You can see... Uh, a bunch of lights where the continent would be in the shadowed part of the earth up there. That's interesting. It shows like, oh, there's, so whatever's down there is a society that has electricity because they have cities that are putting off light and you can see them from here. The pair came around the corner of a warehouse just as a gentle breeze met their backs. Suddenly the sound of the crowd they had been in was decidedly far away and they stood on an old pier. Probably the oldest one from the looks of it. Thank you for hastening our arrival, Seturov. Napsides adjusted his glasses as Dalen took in the presence of the man before them. He was a coyote at present, just as Apsides had said. He was taller than the deer remembered, a bit lankier as a result as well. The long poncho he wore hung from his shoulders like a tapestry. Silver embroidery threads shimmering in the earth light amidst a plain of green cloth. You're late. Napsides gave a soft, uh, soft chuckle in response. Yes, well, we weren't expecting Dalen to actually get up today. Dalen groaned. This was the last thing that he needed. 
but he gave Setarov a small wave anyway. The god was as stoic as usual, save for giving a small wave in return. The wave also apparently served the secondary purpose of drawing Dalen closer via a small rush of wind. Look at the tiny cat! Looking back, he saw a short, heavy-set cat standing where he had been, by Apsidy's side. Setrov craned his head down to examine Dalen. You need some fresh air, then. Mikhail, stay with Apsidis. He may look scary, but he has not been known to bite. Apsidis and the, and the cat looked between each other and nodded at the lanky canine. The cat much more nervously. What is with everyone in my life trying to make decisions for me? Oh, they changed textures. Tetrodov gave a, be a bemused smort in, res smort? <laughs> snort in response to Dalen's grumbling. Do not sleep for 57 years and others may feel less inclined. Dalen raised a hand with a retort on his lips when Tetrodov's cloak billowed in a sudden gust of wind. The fabric grew and stretched, obscuring his vision for all of a moment before contracting back to its original shape. They stood on a beach now, waves crashing against the shore only a few feet from them. Wait here. Just breathe in the sea air and relax. Dalen still had a thing or two to say. But the sea air was wonderfully relaxing. Any response he had originally planned to give passed from his lips with a tired sigh. All right. The god walked calmly toward a man sitting upon a collection of stones. His body obscured by an off-white cloak, with a spear resting against his shoulder. He looked to be, to be a seal from what Dalen could spy. Setorov sat down next to the seal on the rocks. The seal didn't react. It was probably going to take a short bit. Psychopomp work was like that. A lot of baggage was accrued very quickly when one died. And the first person to find you in the afterlife bore the brunt of it. A particularly large wave crawled its way up the shore and smacked at Dalen's feet. Despite the general warmth of, the, of this part of the earth, the sea was still cool and refreshing to feel, nipping at his ankles. Not wanting to get soaked, Dalen took a few steps back from the sea before sitting himself down on the sandy beach. His palms dug into the pliant sand somewhere as he reclined back. Maybe Setrov was right. Maybe he did need some proper air, surrounded by the sand and sea. The sound of water pushing and pulling at the earth, eroding the prints he'd made with his steps. Being alone here was peaceful. He could see why the seal would be, would have settled here after death. Then he spied something a little ways down the beach in the opposite direction of Setorov and the seal. It looked like someone laying on the beach. An off-white cloth of some kind draped over their face. Close enough to edge that, uh, to the edge that the sea sprayed over them with each lap of the tides. Oh. Any and all relaxative properties of this beach were suddenly drowned out. Being what he was, Dalen was no stranger to death and this was in no way the first body he'd seen. But he defied anyone to tell him they could relax, knowing a corpse was being eaten away by the sea in the general vicinity. Especially if they had then had to meet that person. Look at him! The little guy! I do like this artist's way of drawing characters, it's, it's very good. Thankfully, his respite was caught short when Setrolov appeared next to him on the beach, seal in tow. He 
He was a cute enough fellow, Dalen thought. He did like the single small tooth escaping his muzzle. Made him look... Whatever the opposite of cunning and manipulative was. Uh, stupid. <laughs> just a dumb little guy. He's just a little guy. The seal gave a broad, friendly grin. Setrov had evidently done his job of dispelling this man's ennui, despite uh, ennui quite well. But before either of them could say hello... We are leaving. You and I have two more stops to make before returning home. Dalen had been about to ask where they were going when Setrov's poncho expanded and whipped up the wind once again. When it receded, the seal was now gone, and they stood in a dark, quiet hall. Broad stretches of fabric framed the windows and myriad paintings lining the walls. Where's... Back with Apsides. While he is not necessarily for collecting the remaining souls, I may require your... While he is not necessary for collecting the remaining souls, I may require your assistance with this one. He has been obstinate the last few times I have tried to collect him. Is he a badger? Oh. The one Apsis had heard about. What help are you ex expecting to need from me? We will see when I need it. Dalen uh, followed the wind god down the dark gallery after... Uh, down dark gallery after dark gallery. The place was rich and large, but there was something stifling about it. And there didn't seem to be any place for anyone to actually live. Feels like the Ex Machina house. Something about it felt like the matron's library, but abandoned. At least for now. This must be a museum. He had heard about these from Jacob. Petrov came to a silent stop. If his footfalls made a sound, then Dalen had never heard it. In front of a portrait of a hound. Oh, that's describing, the middle part's describing the silence of his steps, but we're still doing the same sentence. So he came to a silent stop in the front of a portrait of a hound. It wasn't the largest painting in the room, nor the most prominent. It seemed to be included as an afterthought. What to say? Portrait of a young boyar by Alexei Nimeskos, Krakow School, 1677, Grand Duchy of Lithuania. The small plaque placed on a modest stand below it read the thing I just said. Whoops. <laughs> and then had a very, some very impenetrable things to say about uh, Chiroscuro and Suf Sfumato. Definitely how you pronounce those. Uh, whoever those were. Whoever? Those names aren't capitalized unless it's something, unless it's a group? I don't know. But the hound in the picture looked strong, defiant, and reliable. And Dalen could understand that much. Him. Who is he? Hubert Huakowski is his name. Tetrov tilted his head as of listening. And he's not far. Keep alert. How much light was there in that city if, if based on when this was painted? That was hundreds of years ago thinking about the earth and the sky and I'm like was there was there visible light in the sky back before electricity was there electricity yet I don't think there you know what I'm just gonna stop guessing <laughs> I'm gonna quickly reveal my inability to place timelines Dalen was only a few steps behind but that was seemingly enough when we reached the doorway Setra was nowhere to be seen damn it not unreasonable but not exactly likable either Dalen let himself wander, since he couldn't see what else there was to do. This place felt like it ought to echo, like a temple. But there was a muff there was a muffled quality to the air here. It stayed silent and stiff. 
Because that would have probably hated that. Windows were far and few between, but shifting lights came in through numerous indirect skylights. Dalen had little personal experience of the different eras of Earth as living mortals knew it, but he knew enough to recognize the color of the night sky outside. Well, yeah, this place does look really modern, but the painting was really old? I thought, are we talking about the subject or the painter? I guess both would have been hundreds of years ago, though. Late capitalist era, he guessed, which meant the pictures displayed in this museum weren't of the current era. They'd be older, some of them much older. Probably why they enshri were enshrined here. Late capitalist era, you guessed it. So time's non-linear here? Or we visit Earth time non-linearly? Because they're already aware of this era and know it as a period that ended at some point. Even though it's when we are, as far as I can tell. Because we're in late capitalism. Was there anything by Jacob? Urgency stung him. Dalen retraced his steps, giving each picture an intense stare for less than a second. He'd know his Jacob's hand anywhere, he was sure, and none of these pictures were his. How big was this place? How long would it take to look through? Mm hmm? So they were hiding. Oh, one sleeve is off, huh? Is it gone? Dalen skidded to a halt. Back in the room with the portrait of the boyer. Hello? The fucking archangel you came in with. Is it gone? It's a ghost. Why are you dressing the person that came in with them if you're hiding from them? A dog with a hunted look to him appeared through the image of the boy here. At a glance, it occurred to Dolan that the painter had, well, taken artistic liberties with his subject. His chest was the same as the painting portrayed, but less broad. The cheeks had a hunger the painting lacked. The hair had been considerably undone by reality. The clothing was nothing so fine, and the eyes were a sad and suspicious version of the painting's august and confident tone, uh, confident ones. It's a furry commission. This is how this always goes. <laughs> Art versus the artist, am I right? Don't let him hear you call him that. Also, I take it you're the one we're looking for. Well, who in the name of hell is we, then? Ah, uh, well, my name is Dolan. Shit, usually the matron gave this introduction, or set it off. How'd it go? Well, uh, you're dead. Aye, I noticed some centuries ago. You and the Archangel, you're here to drag me off to judgment and damnation? What? No, of course not. We're n and he's not an archangel. Hmm. Of course, that's what you would say if you were here to drag me off to judgment and damnation. This must be the obstinance he'd heard about. I don't know ha much about angels of any stature, but I'm fairly certain doing something like lying would end up badly for them. At least if there's any amount of integrity to that damn Monoth Monothion, there had better be some consequence for them lying. If they can. So, you're not an angel? But apparently God also exists, or something. Dallin felt as though his eyes would roll back in his skull. No, don't say that again. Then what are you then? A deer who was steadily losing his patience with a dog standing halfway out of an expensive painting. All right then, settle down. So you're not an angel. You don't look like a demon. The dog looked suspiciously over Dolan's sash and crescent, leaning forward and sniffing at the golden fastener. 
some kind of pagan spirit? Close enough. Yes, that. My tall friend is a psychopomp. We're here to show you the next phase of existence. You mean the afterlife? You're a ghost, aren't you already... after life? Just answer the question. Then, not really, no. It's another stage in the cycle of existence. Death is a transitory exp experience. It's the catalyst for change that is necessary for souls to shed their mortal body and move on to the spiritual realm. So we're going somewhere where you can do that. Not a destination, just a place along the way to... whatever yours ends up being. So you're telling me it's not just judgment and damnation. Dalen was starting to get the impression that this man had a had a, was a bit thick and or paranoid. I don't know if you can and or in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> if that's what you want, I'm sure Seturov can locate an angel to dump you off on. With that, a lot of things are pretty final. You'll get your judgment and damnation and that'll be it for eternity. If that's what you want. The dog looked veritably spooked over Dalen's question shrinking back into the portrait ever so slightly. Well, is it? Because if you keep turning down Setorov, he's going to eventually stop coming back for you. And we can't help people who don't want to be helped. Silence fell. The pair of them stood there for a short while. Dalen waited for an answer. The dog nervously shifted from side to side within the confines of the picture frame. I would like to be helped. Dalen smiled gently and held out his hand for the man in the painting. Tentatively, his large paw reached out and eclipsed the cervids. It was warm to the touch, and the pads were faintly rough. It told of a man who'd known pleasure and hardship in near equal measure. If judgment and damnation truly awaited such a man, Dalen would glad, was glad to deny the divine host its opportunity. Honestly, he would have been happy to deny them at any turn he could. But he'd learned long ago to take the little victories. The large dog stepped from the wall. The faint wisps of soul that tethered him to the painting thinned and snapped before retreating into his person. He shuffled awkwardly on his feet a bit, clearly nervous over being so exposed. It's all right, just relax and, well, you don't have to breathe because you're dead, but going through motions will help you calm down. Blah! Look at you! Look at giant, giant monster coyote. Those are nails for days, goddamn. The dog did the opposite, going completely rigid. His gaze focused well above Dalen's face. Dalen sighed. Oh, he's spooky. You got him to come out of the portrait. Well done. When Dalen turned and found that he... Why, there's dogs losing their shit somewhere. I'm <laughs> sorry. When Dalen turned, he found that he had to look a bit higher than before to see God, the god's face. He was still coyote-shaped, but he'd made himself taller and lankier than before. More bestial. His head was angled in such a way that you got the full shape of his face but you could only see the top of his muzzle and nose. Like his face had become a mask. His eyes were open in an almost unnatural way as he gazed down at you. Dalen sighed. I get that he's been frustrating now. I get that he's been frustrating. Now you've gotten... Now you've gotten to spook him for calling you an ar archangel. Let's... Go before he loses his nerve entirely and retreats into the painting. He heard me. He is a wind god. Sound travels through the air. It's part of his purview. Never mind when he's a coyote. He's just got damn good hearing anyways. Setrodov gave a single flat <laughs> before aggressing 
the more personable form he'd been in earlier. So, just to be clear, no judgment or damnation. Dalen scoffed loudly and slumped his shoulders. For the last time, no. Setrov, get us out of... The wind whipped and raged for but a moment again, verdant cloth obscuring their vision of the room around them. Only to pull back and reveal a dense forest. The dog was nowhere in sight. He dropped the dog off with Apsides? Of course. I cannot have him wandering. He'd undoubtedly just cause more problems. Dylan nodded and turned to take in his surroundings. The forest was lush and cold, rain pattering the leaves and branches of the canopy above. A large squirrel seemed to eye them curiously before rushing up the tree trunk he'd clung to, his cheeks obviously stuffed with some bounty that he'd wished to hoard. The next one is not far. His name is Malcolm. What's he look like? Goat. Single horn. Noted. Lead the way. Saratov was already making his way through the brush. A gentle breeze here and there moved branches, shrubs, and all other manners of plant life harmlessly out of the way. Several of them struck Dalen on the face and chest. Thankfully, their hike only took them a few minutes. They found their quarry standing above a mangled contraption. A trail of destruction seemed to lead down the hillside to said machinery. Plants and earth, disturbed and uprooted all along the way. Oh no, he's hot again. They're all hot. They won't stop. They, they're incapable of not being hot. Their quarry was a goat with only a single horn. He looked back over his shoulder at the two of them and glared before looking back at the mechanical mess. Got a big old jacket? Yep. Extremely triangular. Jeans. No, jeans aren't triangular. He, j he is. <laughs> if you guys are medics, you're late. They took my body about a week ago. Petrov inspected him for a moment. Perhaps he wondered what about him gave the impression of medic. But he was probably just doing it as an affectation, to make himself seem harmless, more personable to their quarry. Y'all clearly ain't medics, though, are you? It looks like you can see and hear me. Suppose it's off to the fire and brimstone like Preacher used to talk about. Dalen wanted to groan at that after having to deal with the dog, but... He'd long ago accepted that religion had spread its roots as far across the world as possible. His long ears flicked. That's not what we do. We're here to take you somewhere better. Y'all don't look like angels. The wind died for a moment before slowly picking up again. Dalen could practically feel Setrov's irritation. We aren't. He's a wind god in Psychopomp. A psycho? Psychopomp. It means he ferries souls to the afterlife. The goat went quiet, adopting a thoughtful look, glancing between the pair and the mangled assortment of metal and rubber. Can I bring my bike? They didn't bother taking the bike, apparently. Dalen and Setarov shared a glance. They both quirked a brow. The deer shrugged, and Setarov moved forward, gently stepping around the goat, like the wind around a mountain before he reached down and tapped the metal of the bike with a claw. Something like the sound of a bell reverberated through the air. The motorcycle began to glow. The light gradually broke off into little bits, collecting in the coyote's palm, compacted into a singular orb no bigger than a baseball. Setrov held out the ball for the goat, who took it in both hands, cradling it. What did you do? I carry souls. 
This is what you can take with you. My bike had a soul? Everything has a soul. Really? Things cannot exist without a soul. Can it think? Would it like to go out with me? <laughs> or, or feel? How would I know? You'd better ask it. If it's likely to answer anyone, it would be you. The goat looked thoughtfully down at the glowing sphere. He seemed to mouth the words, It's warm, to no one but himself, before carefully opening his leather jacket and tucking the orb inside. As he did so, the metal that had comprised the bike in the mortal world rapidly rusted, decayed, and collapsed into a pile of brown and orange debris. The only evidence that there had been a motorcycle at all was a few scraps of wire and twisted remains of the rubber tires. All right. Uh, where are we going, boys? The deer and the coyote looked at each other again. Setorov shrugged. Easier than most I've had to collect. The wind rose around them again. Setorov's poncho re uh, replaced the lush roadside scenery with, with the dock of the lunar surface. Like the sun from between thinning clouds came a triptych of frustration, a beleaguered looking absides in the center, flanked by Mike the cat, hiding behind the overseer, and the dog, Hubert. Who had apparently stolen the, the seal's spear, and with which to threaten Absides, yelling at him to keep his distance. Setorov watched them for a moment, then spoke calmly. Dalen, please ensure he doesn't do anything stupid. I have more work that needs to be done. Dalen turned to object, but the god was already gone. Damn it. Fortunately, the dog was so focused on the demon that Dalen was able to twist the spear out of his grasp from behind before anyone else noticed his arrival. Ow! Son of a bitch! You, you told me there wasn't going to be any judgment and damnation. Why is there a demon here? Dalen tossed the spear back to the seal, who fumbled it moment for a moment before... <clears throat> who fumbled for it for a moment before securing it in his grasp. Oh, uh, thank you. The servant rubbed his temples. For the last time, there are no angels here and no demons. Apsides is not a demon. He's my overseer. He's going to help us get you and these other three settled in. The hound didn't look convinced, but he shut up regardless. Any questions? Good. The seal raised a broad, flipper-like hand, his head scrunched down towards his shoulders, compacting his long neck in a manner that made him look sheepish. Dalen motioned for him to voice his question. Uh, hello, I'm Persephius. I don't think we were ever properly introduced. The Wind God said you'd explain everything about this place when we got here. Uh, sh should I take notes? He produced a small leather satchel from behind his cloak as he said this, pulling a tablet of wax and stone salads from it. That's a wax tablet. Oh my goodness. Well, there's the scholar Magda wanted. No, you do not have to. It's pretty straightforward. Absides and I will be happy to answer any of your questions later, should you have any. The seal nodded enthusiastically and replaced his tablet and stylus in the leather satchel back under his cloak. The goat raised his hand next. So, uh, what's next? Something large fell from the sky then, striking the dock and causing the structure to shake and groan. Hello? Giant red spiderwebbed wolf thing? That, that's, that is a spiderweb. I wasn't entirely clear at first whether or not that was the, the full pattern. <clears throat> hmm. 
Is this the mother? Is there somebody? They, 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 they look important. They got a, a moon. A large red wolf stepped forward from the dust, garbed in a plain brown cloak with a fluffy cream-colored ruff. Sup? Oh, I pressed Y, didn't I, instead of A. <laughs> Worry contorted his muzzle. Lavender eyes locked onto Hubert. Ah, oh, are you all right? Do you look, you look new. Who hurt you? This is one of the others. Talon, which one of you is the perpetrator? Oh, my mother. Talon, you're awake. It's been so long. I need to find the person who hurt this man. Do you know who it is? Is this Cyrus, then? Shush the idiot. The idiot is being shushed. No more speaking. It's our first CG. No, it's not. There was a, the horn scene. Dalen closed his eyes and sighed for what felt like the umpteenth time that day. His hands came up and encircled the red wolf's muzzle and gently forced it shut. Lycoris. Everything is fine. Oh, that's where I know the word psychopomp isn't, isn't it? From, from before you depart. Because that's what uh, Memento is, right? Now, the reason why that thought came up just now is because the developer of of uh, Before You Depart, the, the, that team is called Team Lycoris. So I was like, hang on a minute. Oh, uh, words that I've heard before. <laughs> he was having a religious moment. Have I let you go or are you going to relax? This mountain of wolf nodded empathetically. Someone of his size could have easily broken free of the deer's grasp, but instead he had craned his head down so Dalen could hold his muscles shut from a more comfortable position. <laughs> the largest bottom in, sp in all of the multiverse. Satisfied with that answer, Dalen released the wolf from his grasp. Lycoris closed his eyes and took a breath before standing back up to his full height again. He looks like he's got to be like nine, eight feet tall or something. Unless Dalen's very short, but I imagine that Dalen's approximately average height. Everyone, this is Lycoris, the caretaker of, Mar of Mara Solatium. If ever you encounter an issue, feel free to go to him if either I, Apstis, or your personal tenders are unavailable. The goat, dog, and seal had also taken shelter behind Apsides alongside the cat, who, despite his large frame, failed to eclipse a lot of them, the, the, the lot of them sufficiently. Lycoris waved and offered a, an awkward smile. Well, now that you've made the caretaker, now that you've met the caretaker, it's only proper that Dalen and I properly introduce ourselves. My name is Apsides. I'm an overseer. I run a couple of the various businesses responsible for seeing to the sexual and romantic desires of Mara Salatium's temporary tenants, and this is... Your, like, tending to your sexual desires is literally the first facility introduced to these people. <laughs> Dalen took a small breath and put on a proper smile. I'm Dalen. I'm what's called a tender. My official title is that of an escort. I work at the Waxing Lighthouse Bar and Brothel. Brothel? Hubert per perked up at that word. The goat and cat adopted confusion, and the seal actually took his wax tablet back out and scratched something down on it. Uh, what exactly is Maris Latium? Also, uh, are we on the moon? Is, is that Earth up there? Mara Salatium is the name of this place. It's the liminal city of the hereafter. Where souls who aren't yet ready to move on are offered everything they need to finish their growth. That they might experience all that they should have had in the opportunity... The, that they might experience all that they should have had the opportunity to in life. And yes, that is the Earth. This is the Moon. So it's some kind of anti-purgatory. 
If it will help you understand this place, then yes. A purgatory, as I understand, is where you go to purge yourself of the things in life you shouldn't have done or experienced. This is where you go to experience the things you should have gotten to do or experience. It's actually very comforting as, like, as a concept. The idea of like, oh, well, life didn't work out, but uh, second, second attempt? Uh, personalized second attempt? <laughs> So I take it this is not a place where we would be allowed to stay indefinitely. You imply that once our purpose is finished, we must leave? More or less, this place is transitory. You will not be able to stay here once you've learned and felt all that is, all that is your right. Maris Latium itself will make you leave. Not even Our Lady can keep you here. Though most souls get seen off during the Tide Ceremony each month. Uh, who's this, uh, Our Lady? Apparently it was Malcolm's turn to look religiously suspicious. She is wisdom and knowledge personified. She who stands vigil at night, guides our path with silver light, and guards us our sleep with loving shadow, our revered Moon Goddess. Dalen gently grabbed Apsidy's muzzle, or the closest he had to one, anyway, and forced it shut. Lycoris looked uncomfortable. You all will get to meet her soon enough. She makes it a point to greet everyone, even if she can only spare a moment for each. Ha! I knew this was some pagan perfidy. Better than Hellfire, though, I deem. Do we get to hear the name of this? Your lady of whatever this is. Lycoris growled. Re oh, red eyes. They then shot him a quelling look. It, as a matter of courtesy, we try not to name her, to say her name if we aren't in her presence. To speak it aloud is to draw her attention, and it would be rude to bother her unnecessarily. If you must speak of her, you may call her the lady, the matron, or the librarian. A sexy librarian? No. The dog snorted but didn't say anything more. The goat and cat looked at each other and shrugged, but the seal seemed to nod as if this was entirely to be expected. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh. Huh? uh so there's uh, other services here? Not just, you know. See, password? When people say that, they mean that. Not everything else you mean it you think it means all the time he mimed palming something roughly head sized in front of his hips and blushed <laughs> damn okay usually when people want to pantomime that more subtly they go with the uh they, they go with the, the finger in in, your, in the hand but you, you went full like hip thrust and everything oh, you got do the, do, is that the thing where the, the three teardrops mean three people that he's killed? Is that that thing? Also, I'm seeing a detail that I, I got a kick out of in the fan art for Deadlaws, but amusingly, this artist has is one of the only people I've seen that actually draws the, the thing that Echo visual novels often explain, which is that they... Uh, in the in the Team Echo project things, it's not called Team Echo, it's called Echo Project. Their their stories and and, and other ones too will often try to explain that characters' inner ears turn red when they're embarrassed because the normal blushing face doesn't make as much sense when your face is covered in fur. But this is the first artist that I've seen, and I've noticed this repeatedly now. I'm like, oh, this is a funny detail. They draw the little anime blushy squiggles in the ears to actually express that concept, which I've never seen done that way before. That is a... This seems like a wholly unique invention. Apsity is cut in before Dalen could even laugh, saving everyone some embarrassment. Uh, yes, there are services in addition to sexual and romantic experiences. There'll be time to discuss that once we get the lot of you situated in your lodgings. I also need to get to the library. Dalen glanced down the length of the harbor where a small spire with a clock stood ever so slightly taller than the many warehouses that line the wharf. 
It was well past noon. Collecting those three with Setorov had taken most of the morning. Absides is right. Lycoris, I assume the requisite parameters have been readied. Dreadwolf jumped slightly when Dalen addressed him. His arms fumbled about nervously under his cloak. Ah, yes. I have had the centuries prepare a, a domicile near the Scholar's Sanctum for the seal. Uh, one near Silas's gym and, and arena for the dog. One near the engineer's manufactory for the goat fellow. Absides coughed into his fist. And one for Mike, this gentleman here. Oh, uh, yes, of course. S sorry, of course. Uh, he, he will be above the bakery across the thoroughfare from the wax. The cat smiled happily at the mention of the bakery. Dalen made a mental note that the cat might have been a baker in life? Amateur or professional? Or had he wanted to be one? It would all matter when the time came to work with them. I don't know if the character speaks ever. They haven't seemed to do it yet. What if I have no interest in this gym and arena? Lycoris perked up. Oh, please do not worry about that. If your interest change, we can relocate you to somewhere more fitting. Uh, if you so wish. That is, uh, you certainly don't have to leave if... Anyways. You said Persephus... Persephius. Yes. You said Persephius had been set up near the Scholar's Sanctum. Let's start there. Uh, if you can take it from here, Dalen, I really must head to the library. The seal plodded over to the servant as Absidy spoke. I can handle getting them all home. Go do what you need to do. Anyone else, please keep together. If you wander off, mind the sentries, they'll direct you back to the group. Wait, sentries? This some cop bullshit? Hmm? Oh, no, nothing like that. They handle all the day-to-day -day maintenance of Mara Salatium. Let me show you. One, here we are. The deer reached around the underside of the dock before holding up a single finger for the group of new arrivals to examine. When they stepped close enough to see, they came face to face with a colorful little jumping spider. He waved some of his excess legs at them excitedly, raising his abdomen to show off its bright blue and, and orange colorations. The blue lines in the minuscule plane of orange moved and took the shape of a small heart. Both Malcolm and Hubert reared back, but Persephius gave a small wave to the little arachnid. Mike seemed bewildered. He does speak. I... I... I've already had to do so many voices. What fucking voice is even left? <laughs> I can't keep I can't keep stock this well. So, these little guys handle all the busy work? More or less. If spiders bother bother you, don't worry. They're very good at not being seen and do their best not to intrude. Come on. These little guys run everything? You're pulling our legs, right? How do they handle anything bigger than like Hell, a penny would be too much for that little guy. Dalen and the sentry shared a look. The blue markings on his abdomen took the shape of a small question mark. Uh, believe it or not, uh, that little guy could bench press you. Do you have bench pressing where you came from? <laughs> All right. You, you've got to be full of shit. How is that little thing? You can ask a sentry to bench press you later if you like. That They'll be more than happy to. For now, we need to get moving. You, Persephius, let's go. I think that's going to be the end of our preview here. As we get everyone settled in, and, I'm probably, and it probably leaves ultimately to a route selection between all of them, since that was telegraphed by the early dialogue before we knew everything else that was going on. But yeah, this is Mara Salatium. It's a, an adult game for adults, and if you're an adult that would like to see some adults doing adult things and also whatever the fuck is happening in the setting and more of the art then check this out link in the description and i'll see you guys next time and also check out the playlist in the description to check out more games because i've been covering these for years now there's so many 
You've missed some of them, probably. People request ones I've done before. Look, check. It's there. I'll, I'm gonna keep doing it. No one can stop me. Mm -hmm.